Two years before Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine the first time in 2014 and seized Crimea, Putin sent our next guest to prison for two years for the crime of singing a song that included the lyrics, Drive Away Putin. That was 10 years ago when Nadia Tolokonikova had to say goodbye to her four-year-old daughter and begin serving her sentence of hard labor of making Russian military uniforms for 12 hours a day. After going on a hunger strike, she was transferred to a prison in Siberia. And in the process, Nadia became world famous as a Russian dissident and, of course, as, the, as a founding member of the Russian music group Pussy Riot, who dared to sing a protest song about Vladimir Putin. Singing that song now in Russia could get Nadia sentenced to 15 years in prison, according to a new Russian law forbidding all forms of protest. Still, thousands of Russians have been marching in protests against Putin's war in Ukraine, risking now 15 years in prison. Russian police have arrested more than 13,000 anti-war protesters in 147 cities since Putin's war began. At least 4,640 protesters were arrested in 63 city cities just yesterday in the largest protests since the start of the war. More than 2,100 protesters were arrested in Moscow. More than 1,100 protesters were arrested in St. Petersburg, Vladimir Putin's hometown. The imprisoned opposition leader Alexei Navalny urged anti-war protests to continue in Russia and around the world. He said, everything has a price, and now in the spring of 2022, we must pay this price. There's, there's no one to do it for us. Let's not be against the war. Let's fight against the war. Joining us now is Nadia Tolokonikova, founding member of the Russian protest art collective Pussy Riot. Nadia, thank you very much for joining us once again tonight. Uh, this is an, a very painful night, I know, for you. Uh, and obviously for the people of Ukraine. I want to get your reaction to what we just heard uh, that captured a uh, Russian lieutenant colonel say when he described how, how bad the information was uh, in Russia for people like him and for many people in Russia who don't have active Internet service where they cannot easily obtain uh, real news sources. Uh, did, was, did, did you, was that a, a, an accurate description, do you think? Uh, he sounded um, pretty real to me. Um, I don't really think that he was reading a paper. Um, he was describing Russian reality as I know it um, from a small provincial city, Norilsk, it's on the very north of Russia, and my parents still live there. Um, and I can hardly be in touch with them now, especially now when uh, we don't have Facebook, Twitter, um, YouTube uh, is being partly blocked. Um, all independent news outlets, including the one that we founded, the Scope Media Zona, are blocked now because we cover the war. Um, so it's pretty much impossible for people to find uh, trustful information. They have to be able to use um, VPN, but not everyone has technical skills uh, to do that. Um, so what they described is pretty accurate. And I think um, a lot of the militaries and police who was who were sent to Ukraine actually were deceived because Putin just lies to everyone. Your daughter was uh, four years old, 10 years ago, when, when you went to prison. She's 14 now. Uh, she did, did you think that by the time she was 14, Russia would be a better place? Um, the reason of my activism was to make my country better for, not just for myself, but for my daughter and other girls. Um, I was not expecting a quick victory uh, because I, um, I knew that I went through, uh, I, I went against the most, one of the most powerful individuals on the planet. And I knew that the price was going to be high and I knew that it's not going to be a really quick victory. Um, so I didn't really expect um, to things to change really quickly. Um, but um, obviously we do joke a lot with my daughter that her birthday is um, a quite scary moment in our lives because last time I was arrested at her birthday on the 4th of March and um, 
today we're in um, in the middle of the war at her birthday and well that didn't happen on bir in her birthday but also her dad peter Verzilov, my ex-husband was um was poisoned with a uh, military nerve agent that is like the chemical formula closed in a chalk so i think I, i think at the moment when my daughter is going to be 18 she can write a book about uh, her childhood And when you see the Russian protesters all over the country, even after being threatened with 15 years in prison, uh, can you can you tell us what what makes Russian protesters go out into the street like this, even when they're facing 15 years in prison? We love our country and we want to make sure that our country has future. It's extremely painful to watch how Vladimir Putin destroys not just Ukraine, but also the future of Russia. And um, us, including me, are connecting our future with, with Russia. And we want to make sure that it's seen um, as a nation of peaceful people, not, um, n n not those who invade neighboring country and kill innocent civilians, including kids. Nadia, you've told me before that for you, it, it didn't really feel like a choice. It didn't feel, when people use the word brave with you, I, I know you, you turn away from it. But it, because you've said it didn't feel like a choice. It felt like something you simply had to do. Uh, do you believe that's what you're seeing in these thousands of people who are taking to the streets in Russia now? 100% hundred uh, percent because they're facing 15 years um, uh, they, they might be facing 15 years in prison and they don't really know what's going to happen with them tomorrow they're being tortured in police departments including uh, young women We have uh, numbers of uh, really sad and heartbreaking audio tapes where we can hear um, young women being tortured for their activism um, I think um, it's just um, It's a question of moral choice, um, and um, I cannot I cannot say that everyone has to make this choice. But I definitely have much more respect to those people who make a moral choice not to be silent and um, go and express their position, uh, whether it's on streets or on internet or use your voice while you still can use it. Because maybe tomorrow you're not going to have it anymore. Nadia Tolokonikova, thank you very much for joining us once again. And I know you always turn away from the word brave, but I have I, the bravery that you have shown and that Russian protesters have shown is something that everyone is in awe of. Thank you very much for joining us tonight.